Hello again, fellow Beach Bump Traders. Thank you for joining us for part one of our weekly trading game plan for the trading week of March 20th through March 24th, where we'll hopefully help you navigate the bank collapse of 2023 and help you so you don't get trapped in this bank collapse of 2023. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you all had a very happy St. Patrick's Day doing well, have navigated, survived this bank collapse thus far. And again, we'll talk about our strategies. We'll look at the markets. We'll talk about some trade ideas so you don't get trapped in this bank collapse of 2023. Welcome, Ali in the Bay. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you. Hope you're doing well. So here's our Google document with our notes for part one of our weekly trading game plan for this week of March 20th through the 24th. Uh, you can find a link to this Google document in the description box below. These documents contain all our notes, bonus links to videos, links to all the tools that we use, etc. And they're publicly accessible. We store our notes for our weekly trading game plans in a publicly accessible Google Drive folder, and you can also find a link to that Google Drive folder in the description box below, so you can refer back to some of our notes from this week and also previous week's weekly trading game plans. Uh, welcome the Ricky Khan, MD, glad to see you both. Thank you for joining us. So let's look at uh, how the market ended up on Friday. Um, we'll talk about that Friday was a triple witching or quad witching day. So all the options uh, and futures expired generally uh, cause for additional volatility. Also, we'll talk about all the bank collapse news coming out and again, causing you know a lot of volatility this week, seemed to eclipse most of the economic data that came out this week, but we'll review that economic data and what that might imply for the Fed interest rate decision coming up this week. And we'll talk about our strategies, trade ideas, positioning for that. So we can see Friday, all the indices uh, ended up pretty much about 1% down. A lot more decliners and advancers, a lot more new lows. We can see now we've got 80% below their 50-day moving average, so very bearish. We've got you know two-thirds, 67% below their 200-day moving average. So even though uh, we had a, a on-close candle that was positive, again with options expiration, the quad witching, etc., the day was pretty negative. The heat map is interesting, and we'll talk about this risk-off move that most of your FANG, your megatechs were uh, green, had been green in this risk-off move, and we'll talk more about how to how to trade the risk-off move, except for meta in this case. Good morning, uh, Easy Mike. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you. Hope you're doing well. So we can see some of the news again. The news is all about the bank collapse and you know First Republic plunge. Uh, we we'll talk about the Credit Suisse SVB's parent uh, declared bankruptcy. Uh, it sounds like uh, UBS, which is another Swiss bank, and talks to possibly take over or assist Credit Suisse. So again, all the news and all the volatility lately is uh, is about the bank collapse. Uh, crude oil broke down below 70, and we'll see that in the futures. We'll talk about strategies with uh, oil. Ultra, also, natural gas took a bit of a dip, although it still, you know, it hadn't retested that $2 mark yet. Uh, gold surge, gold and silver surge, again, part of that risk off move with the bank collapse. Um, again, people looking for other alternatives for uh, capital preservation, store of value, etc. Uh, the dollar weakened a bit, which again spurred gold silver uh, positively. Uh, we saw some interesting behavior in this risk off move, and we'll we'll again talk about that in more detail. But let's look at the indices a sec. So we'll see. You know, the spy took a, a dive on that. Um, Bank news. Also, you know, we did get the CPI PPI data. We'll look at that, and that had some some reaction. You see, it broke down below that trend. It's below uh, its moving averages. If we zoom out a little bit, 
So again, we see that very negative candle. Uh, you know, we're below the moving averages. We haven't quite tested the previous low. Look at the Qs a sec. Uh, again, we we'll see this is very interesting in a lot of the futures charts as well as is, is these uh, larger candles expanding uh, volatility, expanding range. So a lot of volatility. Uh, it did hold up above that 20-day or 20-week moving average. Again, a lot of volatility. Uh, and again, they tried to run tech uh, several times during this uh, past week. So uh, we will expect a similar behavior uh, the coming week. We're going to get get these uh, attempts at running technology, particularly in the FANG, Megatech names. And again, we'll we'll talk about that in our strategies. Uh, Dow took a big hit. We see uh, Doji, Morningstar type candle below the moving averages, you know, kind of in free fall still. So uh, potential uh, significant downside still in the Dow. Russell probably got hit pretty hard. Again, your small caps are going to get hit in this uh, environment. Again, Morningstar, a very bearish candle. Looks like it's testing the previous lower very close to it. So again, high risk, uh, potential more downside on the Russell. Look at the VIX. And we saw some elevation in the VIX. but and, and I thought, again, this is very interesting, these broadening candles. So we're getting more volatility, uh, increasing range, although it never did quit quite get above 30. We saw, you know, it's sitting at 25.51 the last time I looked. And so, and again, the, the range is, is increasing. So we're seeing higher highs, higher lows on increased volatility. Yeah, it's sitting at 25.51 right now. And again, we'll talk probably more in more detail tomorrow, uh, but we'll talk about how we're playing volatility going into the Fed interest rate decision, as well as in the ongoing uh, bank collapse news. So now we'll look at the groups, the sectors, uh, look at sector rotation as part of this bank collapse. Checking the chat comments. And again, we'll we'll talk, uh, you know, about the risk off move, safety trade. So again, you know, most se sectors were red. Obviously, the financial sector took the biggest hit with the bank collapse, etc. So, you know, flight out of all financials. Also, there's concerns that the next um, domino to fall, we talked about the domino effect, is in commercial real estate. And so the real estate sector in general got hit. Uh, we'll talk about that. Energy got hit. Fears of recession due to, in part, due to this bank collapse. So uh, all the energy sector, also uh, profit taking out of the energy sector. And again, they were rotating into uh, communication services and basic materials, technology. Uh, communication services is mostly your um, FANG stocks, which is Meta and Google, happen to be classified as communication services. So... Uh, basic materials, we've been talking about a rotation back into basic materials. So we see it slowly moving up. Again, uh, they tried to run uh, technology a couple times last week with the um, bond yields going way down. Probably should have looked at that on the, where the bond yields are on the home page. Uh, we'll see it also in the futures. Again, financials, industry. So we're seeing basic materials move up, and we'll see that in the industries, mostly gold, silver. So again, for the month, real estate, financials, and again, energy, uh, profit-taking and rotation out of energy. If we look at industries, again, we'll see this in the futures, major run-up into gold, silver. Interesting as well as uranium is, uh, although we saw the energy sector got hit, uh, uranium is positive, and we'll talk about how we're playing that um, trade of uranium within the overall energy sector. 
the most negative from Friday. Again, this is interesting because uh, you had uranium very positive and solar was the, the most negative within the energy sector. So again, uh, so we're seeing some um, distinction between the segments within the overall energy sector, uranium positive, oil negative, natural gas kind of bottomed and uh, solar very negative and we also see real estate so your commercial your office real estate obviously banks financials very negative um, again commercial real estate negative again gold silver very positive semiconductors and we'll talk about how we're trading semiconductors you can see it was very positive for the week a lot of that was nvidia i guess amd was running i think micron as well and we'll talk about how we're trading that. And again, solar negative, coal. We'll talk about uh, potential opportunities in coal as we've seen an ongoing uh, sector rotation in and out of coal. And again, for the month, gold, silver positive. So we'll see in the futures again, a lot of uh, upside, a lot of positive momentum in gold and silver right now. So we'll talk about the economic data that we got from last week. Um, again, I, I, my humble opinion, uh, I think it was dramatically eclipsed by uh, the uh, bank collapse and uh, the news for, with the bank collapse. But again, I think it's important for us to know uh, what that data bodes and particularly going into the Fed interest rate uh, decision this week. Uh, because that is the input data that they're going to be using to make that decision. So I'll open up the calendar in investing.com and I'll go through just some of my, my notes and just a quick reminder that as the important um, economic data comes out, I try to snap it from uh, investing.com and post it in the Surf the Markets channel in our Discord. Again, our Discord's free to join. You can find an invite in the description box below. I'll throw it up in the banner as well. And again, uh, in addition to my posting of this economic data in the Surf the Markets channel, as you can see, I usually take a screenshot from investing.com, post the raw data. Uh, we also have an automated feed from Market Watch Economy, so uh, you get interpretations and news relative to that data in the Surf the Markets channel in our Discord. So I um, highly re recommend you also join our Discord. Again, it's free to join. You can find invites in the notes in, our, um, in the description box below, et cetera. So OPEC, I heard uh, they're not changing their plans. Uh, there, there was some forecasts. I think they're, they didn't change their near-term forecast of demand. I don't remember the longer term one offhand. You see core CPI was a little bit hot. So again, that says consumer inflation is still a little bit hot. Uh, the year on year is in line, but the monthly, month on month. So inflation is not going down. So what's the Fed looking at? Well, they're looking at uh, uh, inflation and employment. That's what they're looking at to make their decision primarily. And their two mandates are price stability, which is inflation, and full employment, which is employment. So this bank collapse stuff really, uh, in my humble opinion, again, none of this is financial advice. None of our uh, content should be construed as financial advice. We're not financial advisors. These are my opinions um, only. But again, their, their mandates are price stability and full employment. So the bank collapse, although concerning from a regulatory standpoint, um, an economic stability standpoint, I, I don't think that will affect their decision. And again, in my humble opinion, uh, I, I think they're going to go 25 basis points on um, Wednesday, or if it's Wednesday or Thursday, we'll, we'll see in a second. So again, CPI is still a bit hot. Mortgages dropped a little bit because all the uh, bond yields uh, dropped significantly. So, and there was a little bit of a rush into uh, getting mortgages to just on the dip in the rates. And then again, we got PPI. Now this is producers. So this is the front end of the supply chain curve. And we see it went down a little bit. So that says 
Um, inflation is coming down on the long end of the, you know, on the front end of the curve. So we would expect it to come down, uh, but we see consumer prices are still going up. Um, so that has not propagated and that will take some time uh, to propagate through the system to the point where consumer prices uh, start coming down. So again, you know, lag, uh, lag effect. Um, retail sales, you know, dropped off a little bit. So again, we're, you know, maybe the consumer is spending a little bit less, uh, but not significantly. Uh, crude oil inventories, there was a significant build that may have contributed uh, to the drop in oil below 70 now. Refinery utilization was up. So again, Oil prices came down, building permits is higher in February. So again, some potentially due to the bond yields coming down. And we got jobless claims data. So um, continuing claims actually dropped and uh, initial claims uh, went uh, were less than expected. So that says that the employment uh, is still strong. So the job market is still very strong. Well. Again, that allows the Fed to be more hawkish, more aggressive, uh, because they're not winning the, the battle yet, or they haven't won the battle on inflation yet. Uh, CPI is still high, and the job market is still strong. So uh, all these indicators, to me, again, say there, there's no reason for them to stop their battle against inflation. Uh, inflation is still high. They haven't won, and they can be aggressive because the job market is still strong. So I think I expect we'll hear that come out of uh, Powell's mouth uh, this week. You know, they need to win the battle against inflation. Job market's still strong. Uh, the the bank collapse it doesn't really directly affect either of those two uh, variables. So um, we will talk about the domino effect, the fallout uh, from the bank collapse, and how that may affect the economy. Um, but again, the the economic data that's the input to the Fed decision says they should be aggressive, hawkish, raise rates. So then we got uh, consumer sentiment, production's a little weak. So again, potential recession. But again, there's going to be a lag effect, and we'll talk about that more. I want to focus on the bank collapse this week, and we'll talk more about the future recession uh, going forward. Uh, but we did get consumer sentiment. Uh, you see the uh, expectations were down a bit, sentiment's down a bit current conditions down, uh, but their inflation expectations going forward uh, is down a bit. So, you know, consumer thinks inflation will eventually come down, uh, but not significantly. So again, the important uh, points this week is the Fed interest rate decision on Wednesday. So I put in here the times, you know, typically they release their statement at two o'clock and typically uh, Powell comes out at 2.30 and does his press conference, uh, depending on what, you know, I expect they'll uh, hike 25 basis points and then there'll be some justification, some acknowledgement of the bank collapse, et cetera. Um, but then the uh, press conference will be interesting and, and probably quite heated uh, and will cause, you know, significant volatility in the market. So, um, you know, be prepared or ready to react. Have your trading plan in, in position to um, deal with the volatility, both for their decision as well as uh, any comments Paul may make that, that cause additional volatility. So we'll look at the rest of the calendar very quickly. I'll zoom this up a little bit. So we get typical existing homes, oil, inventories, typical data, mortgages. Again, yields have gone you know way down. So mortgage rates are down temporarily. And again, there now they've got the press conference at two thirty scheduled. Then we got building permits, jobless claims, typical natural gas on Thursday, typical. So again, everybody's going to be you know the two main things this week: the bank collapse, any bank news coming out, and the Fed interest rate decision. And there's going to be a lot of speculation as to you know whether the bank collapse will impact uh, the Fed in interest rate decision. 
we still have some earnings again this is going to be individual company individual sector related so uh you know see what companies if you're holding or uh interested in buying uh somebody that's reporting earnings that's just another uh, point of volatility this earning season should be winding down um, and again uh you know, financials, anything that anyone says that they have exposure to one of these collapsing banks, uh, that's going to be significant and could affect their uh, the stock price, even though they beat earnings. If they have exposure to one of these regional banks, uh, that may be an additional risk that they have to disclose. So uh, keep an ear out for things like that as well. And also we have um, an earnings reports channel in our Discord, and we have an automated feed uh, for the earnings report. So uh, you can just watch the earnings report channel in our Discord, and you'll see those earnings come out, you know, uh, pretty pretty promptly. And you can see, you know, what impact those will have. So hopefully, you know, that's an additional benefit of joining our Discord is you can get the earnings report, the economic data. Um, all automatically and, and relatively quickly. Okay, so now we'll jump over and we'll look at the market screen and Weeble, look at details of uh, various industries, uh, ETFs, etc. cetera, and Weeble. Um, let me grab a drink a second. We'll jump over there. Yeah, I see uh, Easy Mike, et cetera. You're talking about FAZ, KRE, some ETFs to uh, short the financial sector. Tomorrow we'll talk about some uh, ETFs related to the financial sector, uh, both long and short, and also our strategy uh, relative to that. We'll talk uh, in more detail in a few minutes. Um, just a quick reminder, you can see Weeble still offering up to 12 free stocks. Worth three to three thousand uh, dollars. If you open and fund a Weeble account, as you've seen, we use Weeble for our market analysis, for our due diligence, for the vast majority of our trading. And again, you can get up to ten more free stocks if you fund with any amount, even a penny. Um, so if you're not already using Weeble, um, I, I, we recommend it. We like the platform. Also, while I'm here, I wanted to highlight. Um, something that we'll talk about uh, in more detail relative to the bank collapse. Let me zoom this up a little bit. And again, if you go, so if you go through that link, you can find a link to our uh, affiliate link to Weeble in the description box below. Also uh, off our home page and even our uh, YouTube about page. You get the Weeble one up in the banner as well but i wanted to highlight so you can read this in more detail but uh you know that the uh, fdic insurance uh, normally is only valid for 250 dollars per account but brokerage accounts that are members of sipc are insured through si sipc provide up to five hundred thousand dollars of insurance through um, a brokerage account you can see 250 for claims 250 for cash also it's uh, worth noting that their clearing house has additional insurance and you can read again the details um, of their additional insurance but they have an aggregated additional insurance um, that covers up to 900,000 for any one customer so uh, you can interpret this again we're not financial advisors i can't advise you you know how to how to handle your uh, accounts, um, et cetera. Um, but again, uh, an SIPC insured account is insured up to $500,000 normally. And then again, there's this additional insurance up to uh, 900,000. So 
you have a higher degree of insurance in a brokerage account than you do in a bank account. That's, I guess, my the bottom line of my point. Also note that uh, cryptocurrencies are not insured by FDIC. So uh, as you can see, cryptocurrency holdings are not insured. So again, all points that I wanted to convey, make sure that you understand um, that you have better insurance in a brokerage account than a bank account. Cryptocurrencies are not FID, FDIC or SIPC insured at all. So uh, again, just be aware, uh, don't get trapped, you know, in the bank collapse, um, et cetera. And uh, again, hopefully that will help you um, ensure safe, uh, safeguard uh, your deposits uh, more effectively. Okay, so we can see, you know, the markets on Friday, pretty negative, significant declines, the decliners to advancers, you know, three almost three to one. The tail of advance is very small, so very negative. Net inflow, again, we saw NASDAQ, again, I think this is primarily the FANG type stock, so very negative on the NYSE. Uh, positive on the, the NASDAQ. Again, we'll talk about this flight to safety, uh, this risk-off move into the FANG stocks. Another place, again, you can see the earnings calendar. Again, I'm on the market screen and the online browser version of Webull. Uh, we have videos on, you know, how to use this market screen, how you can find this information. Uh, but again, you can see a near-term earnings calendar, what's coming up. In the near term, AMC after market close, BMO before market open, et cetera. So hopefully that helps. Let's look at the best performing industries for the week. So some, uh, some hardware, software, some IT, some computers, again, uh, semiconductors, NVIDIA did you know pretty well. Uh, it's interesting. Fintech infrastructure didn't do too bad. I would have expected that to be a little more negative on the whole fintech thing. Utilities, we saw positive. Again, that's a flight to safety, risk off move. Natural gas was positive. Communication networking, somewhat positive. Real estate, uh, mostly negative. Utilities, again, that's a flight to safety. So when you get this risk off move, you know, one of the things people tend to run to is, is utilities. So ETFs for the market. I'd expect down. So down on the Dow, small caps down. Bear, that's a short, small cap, short the Russell, short mid caps. Again, you know, negative, short the Dow, ultra short mid caps, small caps. So again, your small caps, mid caps, uh, and, you know, even though they're in the S&P or the Russell's going to be even more vulnerable. So again, small caps, short the Russell. VIX is going to be up. So UVXY, leverage on VIX, spikes, VXX, so VIX up, and again, Russell down. Industry-wide, pretty, pretty red. Basic materials, some positive. Technology, a little positive. Again, probably mostly your FANG stocks. China's a little positive. Consumer cyclical a little bit, defense are very negative, real estate very negative, and obviously financial services very negative. Commodities, gold, silver, very positive. Again, gold, silver.
gold hedge. So even the bonds are showing a gold long, long treasuries, extended duration. So long, the long end of the curve on, on treasuries, on bonds. So we'll also see that in the futures. So again, I thought it was interesting, these broadening candles on all, you know, on a lot of the indices. So a lot more volatility in the indices. Um, you know, it's so we'll see these, you know, bigger swings up and down. It's pretty, you know, pretty flat otherwise. But again, more volatility, more swings up and down. Probably opportunity for shorter term traders, day traders, scalpers. But again, you know, don't get don't get trapped in in some of these uh, bank collapse moves. So again, uh, S and P, you know, it's slowly trending up, but uh, again, broadening more volatility. And again, they keep trying to run run the Nasdaq, run tech, particularly on the um, bond yield weakness. The Treasury ten year Treasury dropped off. So again, they they try to run tech. Particularly, again, your Megatech fangs. So Mike, uh, Easy Mike's talking about DRV. Yeah, we have DRV in our um, ETF spreadsheet. We'll look at, we can look at that tomorrow. I'm pretty sure we have DRV. So again, the Russell seen, you know, you see the last candle down. So more negativity on the Russell. Again, we see those broadening candles in the VIX, more volatility, although again, it didn't, didn't really spike. So we're not seeing that, you know, all out capitulation fear. Uh, again, we don't see capitulation type moves in, in any of the indices yet. Now, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. So again, we saw a major drop off in oil, you know, drop down below 70. Now, again, um, Biden's administration has stated that they plan to refill the SPR, you know, at 70, between 70 and 75. It's now below 70. It seemed like a perfect time for them to refill the SPR. And I would expect that that would help uh, support, put a floor in on oil. So I don't, you know, I don't expect a further collapse. Um, but it did, you know, break down below that 70 mark. Natural gas been, you know, less, less volatile. Looks like it's putting in a bottom, a little bit of a negative, but, um, you know, just a lot of chop. Again, I don't expect a dramatic downside and, and, uh, Eventually, long term, I'm I'm expecting a an upturn in natural gas. Now, how far will it you know go back up here? It's that's hard to tell. See the huge surge in gold again. Uh, flight to safety, bank collapses. Where do you put your cash? Well, you buy gold, store value. Silver less so, but you see silver's got more upside. Um, so you know. Now people are looking for opportunities to get into gold. Looks like gold's going to test the 2000 mark. Uh, whether it breaks through that 2000 goes up to 2100. Uh, that's what we'll be interested in see. But, you know, ton of momentum. Now, I, w I wouldn't be at all surprised for a, a brief retracement just because that's a, such a dramatic move. I would expect some, some level of correction, and then we'll see if we get a further uh, push up. Again, I think, you know, we could see more upside in, in silver. It's got upside to about 30. Uh, palladium, too, you know, it kind of trailed off. Copper, uh, fear of recession more so. Again, a lot of the commodities are volatile. So here's the treasuries. You see that huge surge in price. So, again, that's just a risk-off move. Um you know, it's it's not rational uh, relative to uh, the Fed interest rates. You know, they've now got the, uh, I'll look at the actual bond rates in a second. Uh, but this huge surge is just a risk off. And, and we'll talk about that strategy in a second. Uh, but pretty much a risk off, it's sell stocks, buy bonds, you know. 
Um, so that's what they did. You know, they fear, okay, banks are collapsing, sell stocks, buy bonds. Um, and so that caused these huge surges in bonds and a significant drop in yield. So again, I expect this to correct with the Fed interest rate decision. So uh, once the, the fear, the risk off move has uh, uh, spent itself and the Fed hikes by another 25 basis points, that means these yields are going to have to go back up over four. And so I think that I expect this to significantly reverse itself uh, probably right after the Fed interest rate decision. Uh, we saw dollar weakening again, bank collapses, et cetera. Um, but again, you know, uh, when interest rates go up again, the, uh, we expect the dollar to strengthen a little bit. This dollar weakness helps your dollar denominated commodities, gold, silver, oil, et cetera, even though oil uh, declined. So that was another factor. And it was strange behavior in this case. Uh, you know, we saw that in some cases we saw the um, bonds running up and the dollar weakening and oil was dropping and gold was gold silver were surging um also you know even though the yields were going up um the nasdaq you know was was still running up and when uh yields were coming um uh, when in some cases when yields were coming down the nasdaq was going down so um, again it's, it's just fear driven in my humble opinion uh, more so than than uh, the data and reality MD says he's already hearing natty gas costs going up. So thank you for sharing that. That helps. Okay, let me quickly look at the yields on the home page on Finviz. Yeah, you see the is curve is less inverted now five years three four six 30 years three five nine the 10 year there's still an inversion uh, in the middle of the curve but three three nine that's you know in my humble opinion pretty ridiculous given that the fed interest rates are going to go up to what four four point five so So let's talk about our strategies for how how do we don't get trapped, don't get hurt in this bank collapse. Um, last week, we talked about the fallout from Silicon Valley Bank, Silvergate Capital. Um, we released a, a short video on our strategies. We discussed uh, the domino effect, the issues uh, we saw last week relative to Silicon Valley Bank. You know, since then, we've got Credit Suisse. Uh, we've got the parent company from Silicon Valley declared bankruptcy. Uh, we've got FRC, et cetera. So there's a lot of fear with any of the regional banks, um, which, you know, so we see a flight out of the regional banks into the, you know, too big to fail type banks. And I expect that to continue um, again. We, we don't want anyone to get trapped in one of these situations where uh, you get hurt either in trading or or in general. So so we'll again talk about some of the additional news and, and issues with that. Um, you know, the FDIC, the Fed came out and said they're, they're going to insure uh, more than 250,000. It's but it's unclear as to what all banks that applies to. Um, so again, you know, people that had more than that in an account were were at risk. And I, you know, I would advise you know be aware of these insurance limits both in your bank accounts as well as we showed. Uh, there's a 500k uh, coverage in brokerage accounts. Talked about startups and the impact on startups. Just another piece of news that uh, kind of uh, goes along with that. Although most startups are not uh, publicly traded, something to be aware of is that venture capitalists are now now pulling back on funding. They're not offering late stage funding, and they're also laying off. So this this whole market's going to dry up. Um, again, there's you know we talked about the. The Tina, there is no alternative, and the Tara, now there are reasonable alternatives, and even for venture capitalists now, there's other places that they can put their money and, and get a, a 
less less risky uh, uh, reasonable return although you know putting it all in Silicon Valley Bank in one account is probably uh, not a good idea right So, you know, watch out for technology companies. And, and now you're hearing there's uh, venture capitalists advising their, their companies and also looking at when they're looking at funding a startup. Now they're asking questions about, OK, where do you have your bank accounts and how big are they? And are, do you have reasonable cash management strategies? So uh, now that's becoming an issue. But, you know, watch out for other uh, technology companies that are exposed to, you know, S SVB, FRC, um, SNBY, so, et cetera. And again, this is going to impact those small com companies that are burning cash. Uh, if they're unprofitable, they're burning cash. Um, they're drawing they have to draw on their account and if their bank uh, closes or gets uh, seized by the fdic you know then then what are they going to do if they can't get the cash that they need so again be, be aware of, of those risks with any of these uh, companies that are unprofitable with high cash burn etc also payment systems that go through these banks uh, there was mention of you know, one payment system that, uh, you know, if one of these banks gets seized, held up, et cetera, it could uh, impact the uh, payment system that's using those banks. So, again, be aware of any kind of, you know, fintech from a payment system uh, connected to any of these banks or limited to these banks. They're going to need to diversify. I also want to talk about these bank uh, bailouts. Uh, you know, now the Fed is offering to buy back their bonds at the discount window at par value. Well, essentially, that's printing money again. So um, they're, you know, the banks don't have to realize those losses and they're getting cash for their bonds. And that money, depending on how that money then uh, gets injected into the economy, could be potentially inflationary. If they loan that money out and get deposited in another bank, uh, then that money uh, is expanding. So it's also increasing the Fed's balance sheet. So uh, that's quantitative easing. So they're they're growing the money supply, they're growing their balance sheet, uh, and they were in the process of quantitative tightening, shrinking their balance sheet and then shrinking the money supply. Well, this whole uh, action to combat the bank collapse is reversing their quantitative tightening and reversing uh, a restrictive monetary supply, and now it's loosening the money, uh, monetary supply. So again, it's impl potentially inflationary, uh, depending on how this money uh, flows out into the economy. Uh, if it ends up in the consumer's hands and they start spending it, that could uh, cause inflation to go back up again. Also, I want to, again, none of this financial advice, uh, you know, or how, how you should handle your finances. I'm also not advocating or uh, trying to create any kind of bank run or anything like that. Um, but make sure that you have cash that you need readily available. Um, you don't know, you know, what impact this could have on a bank. If it's in a regional bank, um, you know, something could happen. It could either, they could get, uh, seized by the FDIC and your cash may not be available or it just may be delayed. So uh, we might see ACH deposits or withdrawals, transfers, etc., cetera, uh, negatively impacted. So uh, just make sure that you have uh, your cash available to you that you're going to need. Also, I've been sharing with people, we, we both, Sonia and I both have experience working with banks. And in the past, banks were always taken over over the weekend. Um, they'd come in, you know, take over the bank, change the sign. And on Monday, uh, the bank would have a new name, new sign, et cetera, and very quietly. So, uh, these, uh, typically happen over weekends. We may hear more news on Monday of banks that, you know, changed hands are in FDIC receivership or, um, again, negatively impacted, uh, by this bank collapse. So I, I hope this all helps.
You know, we don't want to see anybody get trapped, anybody get hurt in this whole process. So let's talk about these risk off moves. So again, you know, when this bank collapse news started hitting, um, you know, there was just this risk off move, flight to safety. Um, and I wanted to highlight, you know, some of the things I observed in terms of when they go into risk off mode, you know, what happens? Well, we saw the VIX go up, saw the dollar, you know, DXY typically goes up. Bond prices went up, gold, silver went up. So bond prices go up, yields go down. So and we saw now that bond yields are in the mid threes, uh, which again is, is, in my humble opinion, not rational uh, relative to the Fed interest rate. So bond prices are going to have to go down. Yields are going to have to go up. Um, and probably the dollar will probably strengthen. Also, we saw this flight into mega cap, large cap tech stocks, the FANG stocks, your uh, Google, uh, Meta, Apple, Microsoft. You know, there's this flight into the uh, mega cap on the heat map while this risk off move uh, uh, was going on. It was very apparent. Uh, everything was red except the, the mega, te mega cap tech stocks, the FANG stocks. So, um, you know, trade trade accordingly i think again that's just a, a risk off flight to safety it doesn't the fundamentals uh, the news etc um, is not as relevant as people are just looking for uh, somewhere to uh, fly to where they perceive it to be safe things that go down is obviously your small cap your russell uh, type of stocks uh, in general are the are the ones that go down. Again, anything that's perceived as a risk uh, goes down, and it's a flight to safety. So again, gold, silver, you know, buy bonds, sell stock, buy bonds, and again, we saw the VIX go up, but it wasn't dramatic. It didn't, you know, never breached thirty, hit the tw high twenty, high twenty, twenty eight or so. And again, we'll be talking about how we're looking at trading all this, both in terms of you know, if we see more risk off, and I ex expect more of these swings. Um, they'll go risk off and then, you know, people will t try to turn it and try to go risk on. Uh, but again, the, those are typical, you know, your typical bull rally in a bear market type of move. So it may be violent, um, but short lived. Tomorrow we'll talk also, I, I think there's probably a flight into dividend payers and we'll talk about, you know, how we're um, piling into dividend paying stocks. In the meantime, you can see our series of videos on how to find the best dividend paying stocks. So I've left the links for all those videos there and we'll have more to come. And again, uh, some of them are bonus links. They haven't been released yet, but you can view them via the links in our, our notes document. Similarly, our option strategy of buying back uh, selling and buying back covered calls, selling and buying back uh, cash secured puts. We'll talk about that again tomorrow um, as well. So I've got a few minutes to uh, answer any questions anybody had in the chat. If I missed your question, I apologize. Please put it back up in the chat um, and I will try to address it. Also, you can always ask questions in our Discord. Just tag Beach Bum Trading so that I'm aware of your question. Just tag us in the Discord, and uh, I'll try to respond as I'm able. You can also, we have a Facebook group. Uh, here's all the links to all our social media sites, our Discord, etc. On our homepage, beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U. So again, you can ask us questions in our Discord, Facebook group, or uh, direct message us via any of our um, social media sites. And you can put them in the comments to this video. We always welcome comments to our videos. That helps us, helps the YouTube algorithm. We hope you like this. Uh, type of content, please let us know in the comments. Please hit the, the like button. Um, again, it helps us, and we'd really like to uh, build our Beach Pump Trading community, get more traders um, 
in our community to help everyone involved, help you succeed in your trading. The more people we have helping each other out, uh, the better it is for everyone. So please share this with uh, your fellow traders and friends. Again, we don't want anyone to get trapped, hurt in uh, these bank collapses. And, and we're trying to do everything w uh, we can to help help you not get trapped and also uh, help your friends and fellow traders as well not get trapped. So um, a quick question I had, uh, I'll throw this out. I'll probably post it in our Discord and uh, around is I, I don't know if such a thing exists, but I thought it was a good idea. Um, if anyone knows of any brokerages that offer a credit card or debit card linked directly to your brokerage account, ideally a retirement account like an IRA or a Roth IRA, uh, where you could draw funds, again, pay for things with the credit card where it was linked to your brokerage account, and then possibly even pay back that um, draw with profits in your brokerage account without actually having to draw the money out as cash through a bank. I thought, gosh, that'd, that'd be a great idea. It also has significant tax advantages. So um, if anybody knows of such a thing, please let me know. And if not, I, I think it's a great idea and somebody should offer this because again, uh, it avoids a lot of the bank problems and also there's uh, significant tax advantages if you don't have to withdraw money from a retirement account. So. Again, I thought I'd throw that out. Maybe somebody knows of something and, and please share it. So I will look at that. Um, MD said uh, Venmo or SoFi. Also, uh, since I'm just kind of babbling a little bit, um, Weeble is now offering, I think it's up to like 4.1% on your idle cash. Uh, public, which we also have a link to uh, public, uh, they're offering a treasury type of account. And I can't remember the interest rate that they're offering keeps going up, um, which is great. So on your idle cash, you can put it in a public account and in a treasury, which they're buying uh, treasury bonds and offering, you know, somewhere in the 4% for your idle cash. Or um, again, Weeble, I think it was 4.1 was the last one I saw. And um in like a money market account in our fidelity, we're getting like four something percent um, as well. So, you know, having money in your brokerage account, you're you're getting you know probably more money than you're getting in the bank, um, and it's you have more insurance. Um, and there are, again, tax advantages, et cetera. So uh, we keep the vast majority of our cash in, in brokerage accounts, um, and we draw it out to pay bills as, as we need to. Um, but that's, again, how we manage uh, the majority of our cash. So hopefully that all helps. So again, if you have any further questions, you can put them in the comments, in our Discord, hit us up on social media, et cetera. Otherwise, we're gonna take all of this data, um, all of these strategies and we're going to use it to select our top swing tra trading stocks for this week for the trading week of march 20th through the 24th and so come back tomorrow same bat time same bat channel 10 a.m eastern time on uh sunday tomorrow and we'll talk about how we're using all this strategies trade ideas etc uh, to select our individual stocks etfs etc uh, what option strategies we're using. You know, we'll talk about our dividend stocks, et cetera, look at various ETFs uh, that you can use to play various uh, trade ideas relative to this bank collapse 2023, and hopefully so you don't get trapped and, and can succeed in your trading career. So thank you again for everyone that joined us in the ch chat today, and I hope to see you all tomorrow. Thank you again and have a great day.